Hey everybody, welcome to Story Time with Mark Ellert. Hey everybody, welcome to Story Time with Mark Ellert. Today, Story Time is about toxic masculinity because this is an ongoing issue with society. The whole superficial ideals and beliefs of what men are supposed to be. You know, based in, I'm not going to let society tell me what a man is and the way that that's, I'm supposed to act and the way I'm supposed to operate and do things to each their own. I'm not going to let society tell me what a man is. I know what a man is. I have my genitals. I, I know what a man is. That's why everyone, I'm sharing this with you because I don't want you to think society is going to be the one to actually outline what you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to act. Perfect example of this, everyone. Story time. A couple of years ago, I was at a, I was at a, at a show catching some tunes. You know what I'm saying? One of my biggest favorite bands growing up. A huge influence of mine, Dead to Fall. That's right, the one and only Dead to Fall with previous members of Seven Angels, Seven Plagues. Those are my jams, baby. So Dead to Fall was doing a reunion show. They were in town and right down the street from me, not far. And I'm like, damn right, I'm going to check that out. So I snagged me some tickets and I went to go see Dead to Fall. It was a wicked show. A good couple openers. I was with a good crowd of friends and some good people. Good times. And at one point, one of the openers was playing and there was people getting their mosh on. You know, a little circle pit going, a little, little dance, a little throwing elbows and stuff. Getting the mosh on, doing the thing. So as the blind man, I'm just hanging out on the outskirts. I was sitting on the side of the pit, just kind of, you know, observing and just enjoying the tunes. A couple of bodies landed on my right leg. There were some kids throwing down and getting nuts. And they, they all basically just collided and fell on my, on my right foot. And at first I was like, yeah, that's kind of rough. That wasn't too pleasant. I just kept walking on it. Eventually, after the show, or actually after that band started playing, me and homies went outside to go catch some fresh air, have a smoke or something. When we started walking up those stairs, whoo, that's when I felt it. That's when with every step is like, whoo, whoo, I could really feel the pressure. And actually it was like my ankle was about to give. Like it literally, I could feel it eh, eh, just about to start cracking and going. So at one point I'm talking to the people I'm with. I'm like, hey, look guys, that spill that hit my ankle, that's, that's really done some damage. I, I got to go to the hospital. I got to see a doctor or something. I think my ankle's broken. And literally the people I was with just laughed it off. They went, ha, yeah, right, Mark. Your ankle's not broken. You're fine. You've been walking on it. It's only been 10 or 15 minutes. And they're like, yeah, Mark, you, you've been fine. You've been walking on it. That's not a long time. 10 or 15 minutes isn't a long time. And yeah, I was able to successfully walk, but I was in excruciating pain. Literally every single step I took, I could feel the bone about to start giving. It was, it was not actually having the strength to hold my weight. I could tell something, something was cracking. Something was not doing good. With every step, I was ah, this is not good. And every time I went out for a smoke, every time I took a step and tried to talk to someone, I said, look, guys, you don't get it. Something is wrong with my ankle. It's literally about to break. And they just kept laughing about it. I kept saying, I need to go to the hospital. Someone help a brother out. And again, no one would take me seriously. They would just laugh about it and just refuse to take me to the hospital. So eventually at a certain point, I just like, you know what? Okay, I'm, I'm helpless at this point. They're right. I'm wrong. I've been, I've been walking on it all night. I, I, I mean, it hurts. It hurts to walk on it, but maybe it's just damaged. Maybe it's just bruised. I am successfully walking up and down these stairs. I'm successfully coming in and out of the club. You know what? Maybe they're right. I should be okay. I should just, I should just get over it. Don't be a wimp, man. Just, just. Ooh, just puff it up and just, just deal with it. The rest of the night, I kept walking on my ankle and just doing the do and having fun. I came home from the show and just vegged out and had fun and went to sleep. Woke up the next day and just went about my business the way I would do things and just kept walking on that ankle. For a couple of days, it was actually swollen and discolored to the fact of, oh my God, it was, it was pretty disturbing. It was hurting me, but I just, just boom, I puffed it up and manned it up. You know, I just kept walking on it and just ignoring it. I let people get into my head and tell me nothing was wrong with my ankle, that I was fine. I was the one walking on it. I was the one who knew something was seriously wrong with my ankle and I needed to get checked out. I let society and the people I was with get into my head. I let them tell me it wasn't broken and just deal with it. So I just, I felt like I had to live up to society's beliefs. I had to be a man about it and just freaking forget about it. So I stopped asking and just dealt with it and walked on it for a couple of years. Not long ago, everybody, every now and then, because right now we got the winter coming with the pressure system change, when it rains, when there's a weather system change, and at night sometimes, man, my ankle 
it's killing me. It hurts. I really feel it with time. Every now and then when I'm just chilling, doing my thing, I'll get memories and images of that night. And every step that I was taking on those stairs, I can, I can still feel and imagine my ankle about to give. And so when this is happening, I'm still having this emotional reaction. I'm having some post-traumatic stress from it. Still years later, remembering how much it hurt every step I was taking. I can still picture and imagine my ankle literally just snapping. Eventually, I started actually seeing a doctor. I actually went to a doctor and got some x-rays done. I was right. About four years ago at that Dead to Fall show, I broke my ankle. It was a hairline fracture. I was right the whole time. I should have listened to my gut instinct and my feelings. I should not have let society and the people I was with tell me I had to be a man and deal with it. I know myself best. I'm the one in my own body and my own skin. I'm a man because I got genitals, but my ankle was broken. It didn't matter if I'm a man or not. The fact that my ankle was broken and I knew it, I shouldn't have to be subject, subjected to walking on it all night and walking on it for a year or two. Because by the time I saw the doctor and they, they did x-rays and they told me it was a hairline fracture, they can't cast it. They can't do anything. They've been walking on it for so long. All they could do was prescribe me physical therapy. I had to do physical therapy to strengthen the, the, the ligaments and the tendons and the muscles around the area of the, the ankle just to help strengthen it so it won't bother me as much. But that's the thing, everybody. I found out years later that it was a fractured ankle. I knew that night. I knew that night it was a broken ankle, and I should have dealt with it. I should have not let the group of people I was with just tell me to puff it up and deal with it. You know, I know myself, everybody, and I'm a man. I had a broken ankle. I should have treated it. Toxic masculinity, everybody. Don't, don't let society or people change the way you feel about yourself. And when you know something's wrong, take care of it. Don't ignore it and just let it become detrimental and even worse. Don't let it disfigure you or hurt you or damage you just because society is telling you to deal with it. That's BS, everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a man, woman. When you're a person, you know yourself best and you take care of yourself. Do self-care. Do self-love. Don't let toxic masculinity get into your head and think you have to live up to society and just be a man about it and not have to go to a hospital or not take care of yourself. That's, that's BS. Because if you're not going to take care of yourself, that's, that's against the ideas of being a man and knowing what to do, what is right, and actually be able to take care of yourself and, and just and know how to uh, self-preservation, doing the right thing and manning up. That, that's my opinion, everyone. Man up and take care of your vessel. Be a man. I mean, when you're a man, you want to change your oil. You want to fix your car. You want, to, you want to turn some tires and some wrenches. Think about your body as your car. Your body is your vessel in your vehicle. It's going to help you get to where you want to be. Man up. Be a man and take care of your body and your vessel. Don't let your friend tell you, hey, man, you can run on, on, on the same oil for 50,000 miles. It'll be fine. Don't let people just tell you what you can do. Take care of your vessel. Take care of yourself. Know that you're a man and you know the answers and the solutions, everyone. You're a man, you're a woman, you're a person. Take care of yourself, everybody. Self-love, everyone. Until next time, keep it sexy. Make good choices, everybody. i catch you on the flip side.